Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Netus where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our five minute review playlist. In previous videos, we talked about Tetralogy of Fallot, Neonatal Conjunctivitis, Transient Tachypnea of the Newborn, Physiological Changes of Pregnancy, Meconium Aspiration Syndrome, Nephritic Syndrome, Nephrotic Syndrome, and the difference between them. Today, let's talk about estrogen and its relationship to the liver. Don't forget that we should call them estrogens, not estrogen, because we have different types of estrogen. What's the most important organ when it comes to making estrogens? The answer is the ovary, and during pregnancy, the placenta as well. Please watch these videos in my 5-minute review playlist. If you remember my endocrinology discussion, we talked about glands and we say that your body has two types of glands. Three of them obey your pituitary gland. Another three do not care about the pituitary gland. One gland that listens to the pituitary is the ovary. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, please drop a CEO emoji in the comments. Here's the hypothalamus, which secretes gonadotropin-releasing hormone, which goes to the anterior pituitary and tell it to secrete the gonadotropin itself, LH and FSH, which will go to the gonads, in this case the ovary, and will make the ovary secrete estrogen, progesterone, and inhibin for the negative feedback. If you wish to download these doozy colorful notes, go to medicosisperfectionalis.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. If you want me to personally tutor you, reach out to me on my website. Hypothalamus secretes GnRH, goes to the anterior pituitary to secrete FSH and LH, i.e. the gonadotropin. The gonadotropin will grow the gonads to secrete estrogen and progesterone. Why do we call it estrogen? Because it generates the estrus cycle in animals. And why do we call it progesterone? Because it's pro-gestation. It is pro-pregnancy. It maintains the endometrium of the uterus. Do you remember this? This is the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. You know who stimulates the liver to make more angiotensin ogen? The answer is estrogen and oral contraceptive pills, which contain estrogen. And this is probably why Pregnancy has increased plasma volume and increased body weight. Why is that? In pregnancy, there is more estrogen. More estrogen equals more liver stimulation, which means more angiotensinogen production, which means more aldosterone down the road, which means more sodium and water reabsorption. More sodium and water reabsorption equals increased extracellular fluid volume. And the extra cellular fluid volume includes plasma volume. To say that estrogens have an effect on the liver is a freaking understatement. Estrogens will tell the liver to increase angiotensinogen, thyroid binding globulin, sex hormone binding globulin, cortisol binding globulin, aka transcortin, which is a protein that transports cortisol in your blood, transferrin, which is a protein that transfers iron in your blood. Estrogen will activate your liver too much, increasing the risk of hepatic adenoma and increasing the risk of the rupture of hepatic adenoma, especially with oral contraceptive pills. Estrogen increases HDL synthesis. Awesome. And it increases the transport of cholesterol from the peripheral tissue to the liver. Oh, so I'm decreasing the total cholesterol in the blood. That's good. And I'm increasing the LDL uptake by the liver. Amazing. So the LDL, the so-called bad cholesterol, decreases in the circulation. Amazing. However, estrogen also stimulates HMG-CoA reductase, the key enzyme in de novo cholesterol synthesis by the liver. And if I have more cholesterol, and estrogen will also cause bile stasis, I am increasing the risk of cholesterol precipitation as yellow gallstones. If you remember the horrible mnemonic for cholecystitis, the patient is usually fat, fabulous, fertile, female, in her 40s, with fever and 45 freaking kids. Too much fecundity and fertility. Too much estrogen and its effect on the liver. Why fat? Because if she is obese, she has more adipose tissue. Adipose tissue is capable of aromatization, which means the conversion of the androgen into estrogen. 
So the more obese I am, the more estrogen I have. Estrogen tells the liver to make more thyroid binding globulin, sex hormone binding globulin, and transcotin. If the transcotin goes up, it means that the bound portion of cortisol goes up. So the total serum cortisol goes up. However, the free cortisol is left untouched and unchanged, and only the free is active, physiologically speaking. The same thing happens with the thyroid hormone story. The binding globulin increases. Therefore, the total serum T4 increases, but the free T4 remains the same, i.e. pregnancy is a eu-thyroid state. Normally, pregnancy should not be hyperthyroid nor hypothyroid. And when the serum free T4 is normal, the one that's physiologically active, TSH will be normal. This is taking medical education to the next level. Quiz time! Can you explain to me in the comment section why cirrhosis causes gynecomastia? If you want to learn more about intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy, acute fatty liver of pregnancy, which is a freaking medical emergency, help syndrome and postpartum thyroiditis, download my OBGYN high yield course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. There are more than 600 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo, go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine, chemistry, math, and physics make perfect sense.